Welcome to this video on experimental methods for science and engineering students. This and other videos in the series delve into the practices and methods that science and engineers adopt when they do experiments, which are applicable when you yourself carry out experiments. This video focuses on measurement and in particular uncertainty in measurement. This is William Thompson. He played a pivotal role in pioneering engineering achievements such as the laying of the first transatlantic telegraph cable. Thompson said this about measurement. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. I often say that when you can measure what you're speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meagre and unsatisfactory kind. Thompson understood that you cannot make a perfect measurement. That is to say, all values obtained through measurement have some uncertainty. Some causes of uncertainty are challenging to identify. Causes include the resolution of the instrument being used, the drift of the instrument as it ages, the skill and experience of the experimenter, and the limited control of the environment in which the measurements are made. Uncertainty in measurement impacts on the conclusions that can be drawn from values obtained in an experiment. For example, without close examination of uncertainties, an experiment might be misled into proposing or endorsing a theory of dubious merit. Where possible, scientists and engineers act to reduce the uncertainties in their values. Let's consider an example where reducing uncertainty has led to major benefits. It is possible to establish your location using the Global Positioning System, the GPS, and it's something that walkers, bikers and motorists use every day. This table shows that improvements in the measurement technologies used in GPS have led over time to the reduction of uncertainty in the location of a GPS receiver built into, for example, a smartphone. We might anticipate that in the near future, the uncertainty in your position can be determined to within perhaps a few centimetres. How is uncertainty calculated? Here is an example of a calculation using values from an experiment in which the time for a ball to roll down a slope was measured. Here are the timings I obtained for 10 trials of a bowl rolling a fixed distance down a slope. The timings are recorded to the nearest 0.01 seconds, as that was the resolution of the stopwatch I used. A glance at the values in the table shows that the variation of the timings is larger than 0.01 seconds. This being the case, we ignore uncertainty introduced by the resolution of the stopwatch. We may imagine that there's a true value for the time for the bowl to roll down the slope, assuming the conditions prevailing in the experiment do not change from one trial to the next, and is that true value we'd like to establish through experiment. But a consequence of limitations, for example imposed by the instrument and the skill of the experimenter using the instrument, is that it's not possible to find the true value of the quantity. What we can do is to find an estimate of the true value. It's generally accepted that the best estimate of the true value is found by calculating the mean of the values obtained through repeat measurements of a quantity. The mean of the time for the ball to roll down the slope, which is in fact the average of the values in the table, is 2.178. So this is our mean and this is our best estimate of the true value. The mean is the best estimate of the true value of a quantity. However, there are several ways to determine an uncertainty in the best estimate. So that makes it important that we make clear how we calculate the uncertainty. In our determination of the uncertainty, we apply a useful equation from statistics, which quantifies variability in values. The equation can be found on most scientific calculators or calculator apps for smartphones. It is also available as a function in Microsoft Excel. The variation is given by the standard deviation S, which is written as follows. Xi, these are our values. X bar is our mean. N is the number of values. In our case, it was 10. We have a summation here, which basically says, subtract from each value the mean, then square that and add it up for all the values. While S is very useful, is representative of the variability of the values as a whole and does not represent the variability in the mean. What do I mean by the variability in the mean? Consider this, 
Once we obtain 10 values through repeat measurement, we can find the mean of those values. Imagine now we do this again and again and again and again. For each of the 10 values, we can calculate the mean. If we now focused on the means, we'd find that the variability of the means is much less than the values of, used in the calculation. It is quantifying the variability of the mean that gives us the uncertainty in the best estimate. The variability means is represented by Sx bar, which is given by this. We can see here that S appears, the standard deviation of the raw data, as does the number of values here. This is what we'll take to be the uncertainty in our best estimate. Here's a spreadsheet showing the times for the ball to roll down the slope. We'll use that data and we'll calculate the standard error. First, we'll calculate the mean, which is found by just typing in equals, which tells you it's going to be a function, average, open brackets, and then highlight the cells that contain the numbers you want to calculate the average of, which is in cell C2 to C11, close brackets, and press enter. So the mean is 2.178 seconds. Now we want to find the standard deviation. We find that by using another function, which is standard deviation stdv dot s, open brackets, and then highlight the same C2 to C11 cells, which contain the numbers we want to calculate the standard deviation of, close brackets, and there we have the standard deviation is 0 0.0607 seconds. Now the standard error. That's found by taking the standard deviation, which is in cell C13, and dividing it by the square root of the number of values. And the square root of the number of values is the square root of 10, because we have 10 values. So I'll just write over 10 to the power 0 0.5, which is square root, press enter, and we see that the standard error of the mean, which we take to the uncertainty, is to two significant figures, 0 0.019 seconds. We now bring together the best estimate of the true value, which is 2.178 seconds, and the standard error in the mean, which is our uncertainty, which is 0 0.019 seconds. This allows us to write the true value for the time for the ball to roll down the slope is equal to 2.178 plus or minus 0.019 seconds. We can write this a different way. We can define interval, which is basically the best value minus the uncertainty to the best value plus the uncertainty, which becomes 2.159 seconds to 2.197 seconds. And we can say that the true value is likely to lie in this interval. Now, using the word likely is a bit vague. How likely? Well, the probability the true value lies in an interval within one standard of the mean is about 0.7 or 70%. We can increase the likelihood, but not without increasing the size of the interval. I will go into this into more detail in another video. In this video, we introduced the notion of uncertainty in measurement and showed how it can be calculated when you make repeat measurements of a quantity. Scientists and engineers are habitually trying to improve their measurements. By that we mean reduce the uncertainty in measurement, as this leads to more authoritative and trustworthy conclusions. Another concept related to uncertainty in measurement is measurement error. It's a similar but different concept, and we'll look at this in some detail in another video. Till then, goodbye for now.